Matt Stepp, Dave Campbell's Texas Football, back here at the Texas High School Coaches Association and Convention here with the head coach of the Corpus Christi Miller Buccaneers, Coach Justin Evans. And, Coach, I appreciate you taking a few minutes to chat with us today. Thank you so much, man, for having me, Matt. It's always good. It's always good to see you. I know when I see you, football is around the corner because we're either we're either at 7-on-7 or we're, we're out at a coaching clinic or a coaching school. It means the season the season is near. How fired up are you, are you for your guys to take the field? I mean, are you guys, did you guys do spring ball? Or, or did you? No, no, sir. We didn't so you got everybody ball. going July 31st, right? How fired up are you to get, get, get going? Hey, we're, we're fired up. We're so fired up. This is going to be the first year that we do midnight madness. So we're going to get it okay. going at 12.01 a.m. in the morning, turn on the lights, and get it going. Want it to be something new for the kids to do, and, and we're just excited for the season. And, uh, I mean, I, th I think that the success that you guys have had over the past few years, is, is that standard has been set now. It's, it, I, I feel like for you guys it's no longer – you know, I think I think the first couple of years when y'all guys got it kind of turned around, that y'all were happy to, to get in the playoffs and, and happy to to challenge for district championships. I feel like now that bar has been raised, and now you know you know you guys. I think you guys feel like you know we we should we should play after Thanksgiving every year. We should be contending for regional championships. Do you feel like from your perspective that that I'm not gonna say the season's a disappointment if you don't get that far, but that's where the expectation is now for the Miller Bucks. I mean, it's definitely a disappointment when we don't play during Thanksgiving. You know, we understand that. The expectations inside of our building um, and then from our community is, is high. I mean, you, you, you're supposed to play through in Thanksgiving. You're not supposed to lose. And so uh, fell short the last couple of years, but we, we really need to get back to that Thanksgiving feeling and playing there. And that's just going to take beating some good teams in the second round. You know, this, you know last year and this year, uh, that, that second round game is a tough one. When you talk about Edinburgh, Vela, and PSJ North, two really good programs. And so uh, we're going to have to play well this year and uh, stay healthy and and hopefully give ourselves a chance to make a run at it. When you look at your ball club, I, I think the, the things that come to mind are I, I feel like there's a lot of experience back. You guys have a lot, a lot of guys who played a lot of varsity football, and I feel like this year uh, up front you guys have a chance to be as good as you have been. And, and I think that's where we you, – you, you, you'll always have some skill kids there at Miller, but if you can get some guys up front and get, do some damage in the trenches, you can really take it to the next level. I feel like this year up front you guys have a chance to be pretty good. Absolutely. You know, so we, we, we found out last year that, you know, we needed to get a little bit bigger up on the offensive line and so we've done that over the offseason uh, uh, put some guys with a little bit more heavier weight on the offensive line we turn our whole defensive line as well so uh, we, we really feel good about both of our fronts you know it, when you can protect it and win the line of scrimmage you're always going to give yourself an opportunity to win the football game and then at the skill spots there's a lot of experience but you got a lot of playmakers how, how excited are you about the group of skill kids you have coming back and really really excited about those guys you know you lose Lonnie Atkism a uh, guy that's a staple in our program but what Lonnie did for for our, our youngsters was teach them the way to do it, how to practice, how to go about their daily business. And so we return a lot on offense as well at the skill position. Really excited about those guys and the work they've put in in the offseason and um, hopefully the residuals show in the fall. And your district, I mean, it's I, I always enjoy look, keeping up with your district because it's very competitive. You know, I think you guys and vets are kind of the two teams to beat, and I, and I feel like the, 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 you guys have been fighting for that district. You know, when you, when you, once you came back to 5A, you guys have been fighting the district championship. But I feel like this year, that there, there's more depth in the district. You got to come to play every week with, with, you know, obviously I think Carroll took a big step forward. The two last year, the two Victoria schools are always tough. Ray brings a ton back. They, they bring back a ton, of, a ton of kids, a lot of experience. So I feel like, you know, there, there's there's some very competitive football in the district. You got to come to play every week, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, all those football teams. Are well coached so you know it starts with the the leaders the guy the head coaches of those teams they do a really good job and then you look at each one of those teams victoria is always going to be athletic always going to be tough they're always going to play hard uh, we've got to go there twice this year you know which is no fun going to memorial state and victoria those kids play with a little extra juice there yeah. and so then you look at a team like ray uh coach charlton returns a ton uh, i think it's like something like 10 on one side of the ball or it's whatever. 10, on, 10 on offense eight yeah. on defense yeah so he's going to be you know really good and um those, those kids to play hard and uh, they, they've gotten better offseason and then coach, the job Coach Netherlands done in the offseason to get um, Carroll back uh, to where it needs to be, you know, and then Vets has been the standard, you know, and we've got to figure out a way um, how to beat those guys and consistently, but Coach Bittner, a um, good friend of mine, does a really, really good job with that program year in and year out, and even when teams don't think they're going to be very good, they just manage, manage to reload, so we've got our work, work cut out for us, but I uh, feel like that we, we've got a uh, good a chance as any. I've, you know, I've been to a game at Buck Stadium to watch the Buck, uh, Miller Bucks play. You guys, I feel like when you guys are rolling, 
Buck Stadium is one of the toughest places to go in in South Texas and get a win. Talk about that 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 facility and the, the upgrades that the CCISD has made for y'all's stadium on campus there and, and the home field advantage you guys have. Man, shout out to Dr. Roland Hernandez, our superintendent, and Brenda Marshall, our AD. Man, they're amazing people, and they've put a lot of uh, money into the stadiums, both stadiums, but Buck, to be specific, is just an incredible place to play. Um, a lot we of history feel, there at Bucks. Absolutely, Stadium. and we feel lucky to practice there every day. So it kind of creates a home field advantage for us. But nevertheless, I mean, it is. You're right. You know, when we're winning and um, fans are excited, we have the biggest alumni base in South Texas, and so couple that with the natural rivalries that we have in our district, man, Bucks Stadium. There's not a better place to play. And I've and I've I've played and coached in a lot of stadiums, and Buck Stadium is un, un, unlike any other. Um, gets really exciting there on a Friday night and so uh, really a neat place to be. Final question for you coach before I let you out of here. Um, coming up who, who are some you know you, you've been in this position as a head coach for a little while now who are some of the guys some of your mentors when you, when you were a young coach that kind of helped you or even when you were a player some guys that really made an impact in your life and really helped you get to where you are today. Man I, I can name a ton right you know but just to be specific um, uh, Coach Hasseltine uh, who should be at King now he's a superintendent uh, he gave me a chance to be an offensive coordinator at the 5A level and uh, always appreciative uh, to him for that. So he continues to be a mentor. You know, your Carlos Lins of the world is, is another mentor. Uh, my brother, we kind of bounced things off of Jamal Finner. That relationship okay. was yeah. forged through a uh, fourth-round playoff game, and we've been tight. It was tight. a great playoff game. Absolutely, yeah. and we've been tight ever since. And um, and then, you know, just, just the guys from the BCA that, you know, kind of taken me up underneath their wings. Can't forget about Coach Chris, Anthony Chris, that just retired. Yeah, the, He's another the Godfather. good one. He's one of the godfathers, Man. yeah. And Chris Gilbert, no, those guys are just good dudes that I can call. And if I ever need any advice or need any um, direction and things, those guys always answer the phone. They're, they're really good, and so I'm appreciative of them. Coach, we'll let you get out of here. As, as you can see, our Dave Campbell's booth uh, stays busy. We, all, we, got, we got him in and out. We try to be the place to be here at coaching school. So. Absolutely, man. Thank yeah. you guys for what you do for kids, and uh, thank you so much, and hope to see you in the fall. Hope to get you down to Corpus Christi, and we'll, we'll catch, catch a game of the Bucks, Bucks going on. Let's do it, man. Thanks, Coach.